I have often heard that VR in Linux is so bad that it stops people from switching, so naturally, I had to try it out. Without any peer research, so let's get started. Was it a dumb idea? Let's find out. In this video, I will tell you everything about my VR experience in Linux, so you can decide for yourself if it's worthwhile trying. The headset I chose for this experiment was the first generation HTC Vive, because it was not only affordable, but it was also an official Steam VR product. My hope was that it could work out of the box, and it did, but more on that later. First, let's talk about the Linux distribution I use and the system specs. I'm currently running Fedora 41 with the GNOME desktop environment, and luckily, GNOME just has implemented the Wayland DRM lease feature in GNOME 47, which enables VR on the GNOME desktop with Wayland. As always, a bit late to the party because KD Plasma has implemented this protocol for years, but better late than never. The hardware specs of my PC are an Intel Core i3-12100F, 16GB of RAM and an AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT. Not quite as low spec as usual on my channel, but the performance is necessary to render 90fps per eye in more recent VR games at least. The installation process was surprisingly straightforward. First I set up the base stations, then I connected the breakout box to my PC. I was prepared to spend hours with workarounds because this headset was released at a time when Linux gaming was almost non-existent, but after installing Steam VR, it just worked. This was very easy so far. After the room setup process, I was finally ready to play Half-Life Alex, which is a Linux native game by the way, and oh boy was it good. Maybe I should also tell you why I wanted to try VR in the first place. I bought Half-Life Alex to play it with the no VR mode and even though it was really fun, the further I progressed in the game, the more it felt like I was missing out on something truly great. So I decided I need a VR headset. After I had such a success with setting up the VR hardware and playing Half-Life Alex, I installed Metro Awakening to see if a non-native VR game would also run. And it worked out of the box without any tweaking. Another non-native game that I tried was Propagation VR, which is a free game and I have no idea why this is free, because it's really good. And more important for the topic of this video, it ran really well with Proton without any additional tweaks. This was too easy, I was waiting for the catch. But then eventually I encountered a problem. I really love BeamNG Drive, a game that I play since 10 years now and I was really excited to experience it in VR for the first time. Especially since it's possible now to walk around, grab the door handle, open the car, open the trunk and so on. But unfortunately the game just refused to switch to the VR mode. So I tried some workarounds like using the latest Proton GE but no luck unfortunately. Also since we are talking about problems, I encountered some crashes and bug reports here and there regarding Steam VR. Sometimes it opened random windows, which displayed nothing and could not be closed. All in all, it felt a bit like a beta software instead of a finished product. Some of these problems could also be related to GNOME. I plan to switch to KDE Plasma next year for at least a month, and I'm very curious if the mentioned problems will also occur with KDE Plasma. But all this had no influence on the gaming itself, so it wasn't too bad in my opinion. So is it all sunshine and rainbows for VR on Linux? Yes and no. Steam VR and an official supported headset offer a very good experience in my opinion. However, you may or may not be able to get other headsets to work with for example ALVR. As is so often the case, the experience depends heavily on the hardware and software. The right headset and the right desktop environment provide a plug and play experience. The wrong headset or an outdated version of GNOME can quickly ruin the fun. Do you already use VR in Linux or are you planning to do so? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want me to review the first generation HTC Vive in a separate video, you guessed it, also let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video and consider subscribing. See you in the next one.